so excited for tonight's call. Yeah, people will keep filing in, I'm sure. Um, so excited for tonight's call. I do want to announce if you are going to Vegas with us for celebration, we, um, tickets, I, I, there's like less than 20 tickets. Okay. So I heard there were 30. I know more people on this team snagged them. If you don't have your ticket yet, please do not, uh, wait on that. Please get the ticket right away because it's, um, and I know like Holly, I know you grabbed yours today. Lisa, you grabbed yours. I'm, I'm just so excited to be in community this summer and have that event together. And we're going to make it, I'm going to be on a planning call tomorrow with Kelly Dicker, who Flora Stevens, um, Lindsay Hoffer, and we're going to really make Friday a full day of programming. So it's not just pressing play on the event. You get so much more out of it. So I spent so much of my day today voice texting people to, you know, really be going through like, hey, I really, you know, make sure that, make sure it's on everyone's radar. So I'm really thrilled about it. And I am at the, at the moment, even more thrilled for our guest to speak and share with us tonight. You guys, Christine has just exploded her business this year. And it's so fun to see. It's, she's just realer than real. She leads with authenticity, heart, consistency. I see it in her. Um, you know, she started this business. I'm sure she'll share her story. I won't, um, you know, take it over for her, but she started this business nine years ago now, right? About nine years ago. And she's making crazy, crazy residual income every single month. And I know that she'll share also the ups and downs of the business. And she had, you know, years that skyrocketed, years that maybe went down. It's all normal, you know? And she's just a true testament to this compensation plan and really just sticking to something and really doing it and going after it and, uh, you know, juggling being a mom of two little kids, a wife, all the things, right? So Christine, your current, do, do, what's your current rank? Just so that they know. Um, five star golden circle, one star crystal. Executive. Five star. Yep. So she's created a personal executive plus others in her downline and five star golden circle is more than a hundred cycles in a week. And her current paychecks are reflecting that you guys, she just, made about $15,000 in April. And I know she made even more than that, like January, February. So Christine, do you want to start with just sharing a little bit about your story and your background and like what made you say yes to Isogenics? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And it's fun to see some familiar names and faces on this call. Um, I haven't seen you forever, Gretchen. I miss you. <laughs> um, so yeah, so like uh, Allison said, I started Isogenics nine years ago, and at that point, I was a personal trainer, you know, just starting for the nutrition like most people. Uh, even a, though I was a personal trainer, I was really struggling with my health. I had some gut issues, and you know, I, it was three to four years of just having chronic health issues that no doctor could fix. You know, I could eat well, exercise, like I knew what to do, but I was gaining weight, which my body was really out of whack and I was just living miserably in my body. And, you know, fortunately as women, we talk to our girlfriends about, you know, problems in life. And I just happened to complain about my issues to Amanda, which was the right person because she was the one that introduced me to Isogenics and she was only a couple weeks into her journey. And, you know, I didn't even look into any part of what this was because, you know, I trusted her. It was a friend. She lit up about it and I was just so desperate to try it you know, that 30 day money back guarantee for me was really huge because I had spent like, you have no idea how much money I spent trying to fix myself. And I was like, okay, like, you know, she thinks that this could help me. I'm going to try it out. And I just, you know, started with one of the cleanses and, you know, like everybody else, like you get after that two day cleanse and like, I just couldn't believe the results that I was having. And even if within my first week of work, you know, working there at the Y and doing my cleanse, I had people at work ask me, they're like, what are you doing? Like, you look better, like all these things. And I was like, holy cow, like, I feel great. Like I see the difference, but like other people are asking me and it's like, maybe I should actually look into like what this is. Cause I have no idea, you know, and as a trainer, like to like actually recommend something, like I'm like, I should probably understand more of it. And you know, like, you know, a lot of you, like the more that we learn about it, it's like, wow, that's why that happened so fast. That's why like the weight was dropping right away. You know, my body reacted so well. And I just knew that I had something as a trainer that I could really help people, you know, cause I had people coming in every day 
that were struggling with their weight and their health and they were stuck and they were depressed about it. And, you know, so it's just been something that I've been really passionate about sharing with other people. And, um, you know, I didn't start for the business. I mean, it was nice when I first started, I did a nine, Amanda started everybody on a nine day cleanse, to be honest with you. So that's what I started with. And, you know, it was like, I don't know, like there was magic that happened within it, but like, I knew that I wanted to continue doing it. And honestly, like I was struggling financially. And so to like continue doing isogenics, like I really needed to get my products paid for. So the process of just having people asking me what I was doing and like being, I'm more introverted. Like I was like, heck I can hide behind social media. Like I can do posts all day long if I don't have to talk to somebody, you know, and that's what I did. And, you know, few months down the road, I was getting paid by just helping people get started, you know, and that was huge for me. And it wasn't until I was pregnant with Avery that, you know, I really was hating work. I felt stressed. I was overworked. I was underpaid, you name it. I didn't want to go back. And the thought of putting her in daycare was just excruciating for me. And, you know, my husband jokingly was like, well, sure, you can stay home if you can replace your income. And I was like, okay. You know, so it's like I had, you know, it gave me a why to really try to get to work. And fortunately, we had, you know, I had seen Amanda, you know, I'd been to an event already and I saw Kelly Dickerhoof and saw really what was possible. And I was like, okay, like I need to make this happen because I knew from where our financial situation was that like staying at the Y, like nothing was going to change. But like if I could stay home and do this, like I could change the course of our family's future, you know, I just needed to be given the chance, you know, and just, you know, more so got to work, you know, there's been ups and downs and, (laughs) you know, no, it's so good. And I mean, I think it's so relatable. It's how so many people get started. Right. I mean, there, I look at other names on here, right. Lisa, Holly, Gretchen. I mean, you all were like, I just want to feel better in my body. That's it. Like, I don't really need to know about the business. And then maybe you want to get the products paid for just a little bit, right? So what was, what do you think it was that really like turned your light on for you? Like, what is it that you do to, what turned your light on? And in that, are there clues that help turn other people's lights on on your team? I mean, I remember like uh, there's been several defining points in my business where things have taken off, you know, and, you know, obviously one of them was, you know, not wanting to put Avery in daycare for sure. You know, I remember, and I can't remember which celebration that I brought my husband to. And, you know, even though I was able to stay home and it was at a point where like, I wouldn't have to ever go back to work because I was making enough money to stay home, Mm -hmm. but there was still financial stress that was very suffocating still, you know, we weren't able to get ahead still, you know, and it was kind of like, what in the freaking world are we even doing? Like, we have this, like, let's like, let me put my head down. And like, if if we have to make some sacrifices, we have to make some sacrifices, but like, let's do this. And that was when, you know, I had been stuck at three star and I didn't even truly hit three. I mean, I hit three star with goal cycles, you know? So like, but it was like 15 months that I was stuck there. And then we went to that celebration, you know, and you go to an event and you're, you know, (laughs) you always leave feeling better. Right. And you're just like, let's do this, you know? And that's when we had, you know, we hit three star a couple of times, we hit four star and we hit five star within like five months, like things rose crazy, crazy fast for us, you know, and it was a matter of just having the right people pushing. I shouldn't even Mm -hmm. say right people, but having people (laughs) pushing in our business, you know, at the same time where that really grew, you know, but I'll be honest with you, you know, things kind of, you know, shit hit the fan after that. Yeah. In our so, business. Really yeah. Pumping. I mean, you hit, you hit three, four, five star, five star, and those runs are so great, right? That's so mm-hmm. awesome. So that happened a few years ago. Events always help. Uh, we all, every, I mean, type a one in the chat if you feel, are feeling the need for an event right now, right? We all are. We all are. So I'm glad everyone's plugging in, in, you know, either <laughs> here in Minnesota or in Vegas, because heck yes. And magical things come just energetically from being at those events. So mm-hmm. then, so then what happened? Because I know, I mean, you shared publicly, both publicly and I know on a different team call about, um, you know, la- like last year, kind of having like a slump 
-hmm. And then now this growth into this year, like what, do you want to just share a little bit about that? Like in full transparency, because people, it helps to know like it's normal and you're not alone and business (laughs) is normal and the cycles. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, you don't get successful by just going straight to the top. That's, that's for sure. You know, and that's the one thing too, is like, you know, I can look back on some of the hard stuff now. Like I did a call with Angela's team and I actually got like super emotional, like talking about it because, you know, after we hit five star, it was like, we hit five star and like, you know, I just thought like we were just golden at that point. And then it was like, you know, we had people leave our business and we had, you know, I got pregnant and I had a hard pregnancy. And then, you know, like we had a lot of medical issues. My dad had a struggle. I mean, like life happened and, you know, some of it was life, but like some, you know, it was me too. My team kind of got burnt out. Like we've all had burnout, right. In this business where it's just like hard to keep going and it just kind of all happened at once. And, you know, it was very defeating to like, you know, hit that five star and then, you know, some weeks only be, you know, which like, you know, like you said, like five stars over a hundred cycles, you know, and then, you know, having a low week at 14 cycles, it's like, hoofda, like it was a blow, you know, and I'll be honest with you, that celebration, I think it was 2019, I had hired a personal coach. And so she was helping me through a lot of stuff because I mean, you get a lot of self doubt when that stuff happens, right? You know, and you're like, can I like, can I do this? Like, was it just other people that were better than me that were pulling my team? And, you know, like, I'm not really worthy of it. And, you know, I almost didn't want to go to celebration that year because I was so embarrassed of where my business was. Like I was this close to just not going, you know, Mm -hmm. and it was, it was hard, you know, to do that. But, you know, I see, I see now that like, I honestly, I'll just be honest. I wasn't building with the right people in the first place, you know, and some of those people like just know, like, I don't know how long some of you have been in this business, but like, you don't have to build with everybody, like pick the right people because I was building with some of the wrong people and I prayed for them to leave my business. And I'm, you know, what came along with that is they left, but you know, I had to rebuild my business on my own, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah, you know, now I'm building with the right people with the right integrity. And, you know, I think it's be- helped me become a better leader you know, by having to go through those hardships and just know that like, if you've been through some of those hardships, there's always a purpose behind it. It just sucks at the time. (laughs) It really does. You know? Yeah. No, that's such, I mean, that's so good. And it's so true. I mean, you know, we say you don't have to work with everyone and link arms with like-minded people. And so if you have people in your business, anyone where you're like, oh, this just feels like sandpaper or it, you know, Barbie protects her energy like this, or, Mm -hmm. you know, you know that if you get to choose who you work with, you really do get to choose how closely and if, you know, and working with the right people. And, you know, just imagine if you would have quit during that time or imagine, you know, what you're experiencing now, if you went, you know, like, do you think about that? Like, gosh, what if I wouldn't have kept going? you know, right. because now you're making like life change. I mean, you're making like life changing wealth building income. Right. I know. I, I mean, I was just telling somebody that today that like, there's just not even a day that goes by that I'm just not just so unbelievably grateful for all of it, you know? And I try to tell this to my team and I truly believe this for everybody in isogenics is that as long as you don't quit, there is the other side to where you want to go. Like you will always get there. Like, I just truly believe that, like, you just got to keep going and you got to stay consistent and you can't take yourself out of the game. Like, it's inevitable that you're going to get there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, yeah. you know, some people get there faster than others. Like, right. Like, you know, like by the time I hit millionaire, like I'll be over 10 years into this company and who the heck cares when you get yeah. there? No one cares. It doesn't matter. It does no, not I mean, you're, you, everyone is the hardest on themselves with things like that, right? right? No one else looks at you like, ugh, how do you know? It's like we're the hardest on ourselves. So, right, I'll be Absolutely. celebrating that for you. And when you say you do the work, you just stay consistent. What does staying consistent doing the work look like to you? Even in those hard times, what are the like few things that you made sure you did to move the needle or, you know, kept going? Right. 
Um, you know, like I probably dropped off of being consistent, honestly, for a little bit there because of discouragement and just, you know, some of the things that were taking over my life at the time, you know, mm-hmm. I think back, you know, January, 2020, you know, thinking like 2020 vision, this is going to be a kick-ass year sort of a thing, <laughs> you know, like I was, I was like mindset, like I was ready to conquer 2020, you know, and like, I feel like regardless of everything, like I really tried to continue with doing that. And I don't even know what really changed in me. It was just, you know, I think just going through some of those hardships and knowing that I had more in me than what I was really delivering. Right. And I think that we always kind of feel that way, you know, with just like, we're capable of so much more Mm -hmm. and really what the last couple of years had been, like, even though there were circumstances, like also like it was up to me to like, also make those changes. And if I wanted to shift, it was, it needed to start with me, you know? And so starting the year that way with intention on where I wanted to go and being more consistent and, you know, like we moved last year and like, you know, it's just like having some of those non-negotiables, like no matter what, that you're always going to be doing in your business, even when like, you can't do everything, like you have to do something, you know, otherwise like people think your business is closed, right? If like you go MIA, it's just, what people think, you know? And so like, I try to, you know, like, I remember like when we did move, like it was very last minute for us. Like we were renting a place and came home one weekend to a for sale sign in our yard. It's like, I guess we're moving, you know? And there was a lot that had to be done. And I was like, I just can't really do my business the way that I need to. But I made sure that my non-negotiables were, I'm like, I'm going to show up on social media as though like, I'm kicking ass in life and like I'm present and I'm doing things, you know, and I made sure to like send out my birthday messages. And I think I had one more thing, but that was kind of like all that I did for the most part, you know, Mm -hmm. um, you know, but you know, now I thank God for the penny app, you know, like wish would have had that a long time ago. Cause even if I'm not consistent with penny, like I should be sometimes like, it's always great to like go into that. And it's like, Oh my gosh, like I have this whole to-do list, you know? Yeah. And she'll let you know, she'll let you know right. if your activities down or <laughs> yeah, no, totally anyone. I mean, you, uh, does anyone else here have questions for Christine? I just want to like open it up. I know there may be things that she said that are, you're like, I want to know more about that or want to just hear from her on specifics. Open it up. Why group tonight? <laughs> I'll ask the question. Um, <clears throat> what were some of the things that your coach told you to that helped you to grow? Oh, it's a good question. Um, I think, you know, and I can't remember what all the things that we did together, but, you know, there were things that had happened in my business with like people leaving and just different things that I had. I knew I had some negative energy on, but I didn't realize how much I was holding on to some of those things. And she really helped me kind of release some of that. Um, I was like, oh crap, that's heavy stuff. Like I didn't, you know, she's like digging that stuff out of me. And I think I needed to like, you know what I mean? Like when in this, I think in this business, especially when it comes from such a positive place and serving people, when we're pulling from a negative energy, like it does not allow us to grow at all. So she really helped me with some of that. Um, you know, I still kind of go up and down with this, but she also helped me relieve some energy around pulling people, right? Wanting it more for people. Um, because I was finding, like, I was just trying so hard, like gripping people, like, right? Like gripping that energy. And it was like, eh, like having to let that go and let things happen. Um, you know, just even my verbiage, like of talking to her, she's like, whoa, like, hold on, like, <laughs> you're not letting things flow, right? You know, and just having to work on some of that, you know, and it's a hard thing in this business to like, not want to drag people and want it more for people. And it's just, I'm having to constantly, I think, work on that. And I'm sure some of you can really relate to that because, you know, I was telling somebody else today, like, that's what kills me the most is like, when you have some in your business that you, that are, they start to do things and you know why they want to do it. And then they drop out and you're just like, but what are you doing? Like, let's go, you know, it's, it's hard. So those couple of things, like just really helped release some of the energy that I needed to, um, you know, cause I know some, I know some of you specifically are very on 
like you got a, the positive energy around you, right? You know, and it just affects everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was helpful. Yeah, that's so good. And we all go through it. Like everything, you know, we all have the people that all of a sudden disappear or we want to grip too tightly or we're like, oh, why don't they just get it? You know, it's like, it, it's all so normal. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, yes. What about um, some of your biggest like business partners that have come in, you know, the right ones? Where did, mm -hmm. how did you attract them in or where did you find them? Or like, what did you say to, what do you feel like just clicked? Um, you know, it's been some of a trickling effect, you know, and it's always so funny because I try to also tell this to my team too, like some of my business, biggest business builders did not come into my business for four to five years, you know, and I've got people that are six months in and are ready to call it quits. And it's like, no, like you can't, like you can't, right? Like your biggest people are going to come in five to six years and then blow the crap up of your organization. And Kathy Coover had told us this story and I thought it was so powerful where I don't know who it was. She didn't, I don't think she shared the name of it, but it's somebody in isogenics that was in really early on and they had stayed at one star and for years and they were really stuck. They had a blown out one side, you know, but like was not building. And then all of a sudden somebody enrolled Jimmy Smith on her weak side and Even maxed out her whole compensation plan. Yeah. And I was like, that's like the best story ever. Right. You know, but it's like, are you going to be around long enough for yeah. Jimmy Smith to be entered in, even if it's heck 10 years from now, like you're going to be sitting in a good place, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, so it's, you know, years down the road. I mean, like you guys know, Tammy, like Tammy and I went to college and, you know, like she jumped in and, you know, it happened to be that, you know, you know, it's funny how she enrolled Michelle, like Michelle's you know, one of my biggest business builders now, which she shared with her. And it's funny because I don't know if all of you know that Tammy actually blocked Michelle on social media for a full year. And because they were doing another network marketing company together. So she was afraid of what Michelle was going to think. And literally the first post that she allowed Michelle to see was her one year anniversary isogenics post. And immediately Michelle messaged her and said, girl, like you look amazing. What are you doing? she enrolled and like, you know, a few months later went to NYKO. And so Michelle still gives her crap. It's like, do you know that I could probably be a millionaire right by now if you went to block me on social media, you know? So <laughs> so funny. Like, this, this is why you just, you know, put your stuff out there and, you know. And just keep doing it. And you think. never know who you're, yeah, you never know who you're going to meet. You never know who the team you do have is going to meet and share something that hits with someone. Yeah. We had right. Betsy Frame on our team call a while ago and Betsy's post for April, she just made $60,000 yeah. in the month of April. And, you know, she would say, yeah, you just stick it out long enough and, you know, people get dropped. I mean, she's done a ton of work with Jill Bowman and other, you know, others on her Kelly's whole org, but, you know, you just never know when the right people will come. And then you look back and you're like, oh, why was I chasing the wrong people for so long? Oh my gosh. Right. So good. Well, and it just, you know, and it doesn't take a crazy amount of people, right? You know, it really doesn't. And those people will eventually come into your organization. It's just, yeah, it's a matter of time, you know, and, and that's getting cool the and getting the ball rolling and going, you know, enrolling a lot of people through the process and creating, helping them find a couple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Good. What other questions, if anyone has anything else that's sparking in them? I have another one. Yeah. I'm like obsessed with studying successful people. So I know I you are. I, I took longer um, than I thought that first round. <laughs> my favorite thing. What do you feel like are the things that you do to your three PET plus um, that are moving the needle? You know, something that I've continued to try to do is um, try to just reevaluate where people are at, you know, and you know, trying to, you know, I just tried starting, you know, it hasn't always been successful, but like trying to do some, even some personal coaching programs and trying to do the, you know, with the people that really want to do it, like allowing them to do like a coaching, like six week coaching with me. And it's like for the people, you know, like, are you a one, two or a three, right? You know, and like trying to figure out how to coach those people. And it's like, gives me focus on like who, who to coach, right? You know, because 
I don't want to waste my time with people that don't want to do this at this point, you know, and so I'm continually trying to, <laughs> to reevaluate like where that's at. Um, so I think some of that one on one coaching has been great, you know, and just also like trying to figure out who on my team I need to like lock my arms with the most because there again, like for some like Michelle, like she's probably like my closest person on my team. And like, we work really well together and like, she's pushing really hard and like, she keeps me like, she kicks my butt. Right. You know? And so it's finding those people on my team that like can hold me accountable too, and like keep my energy up, you know, because I don't have the energy to like drag people, you know? So it's like, I just recently like had launched like a level one and a level two coaching, you know, and some of the stuff that now Amanda's going to be doing kind of overlap. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to, figure all this out now because some of the stuff that she's going to be doing a boot camp was kind of what I was planning on doing, you know, but just so I could figure out how to coach people better. Cause I don't want to scare people away from like a coaching thing with me, mm -hmm. but just to say like, if you're a level one, that means that like you're running, right? Like you're ready to go to executive, you know, or are you a level two or three where like, you know, you want to build, but like you want to take some more baby steps. Maybe they're just learning the skills and like, then I can coach them differently. Cause then I'm not like frustrated with people either. Right. You know, where it's like, okay, you're telling me this is where you're at. Like we can work with that. Or if you're telling me like, I want to get to executive like tomorrow. Well, now I know that I can like put my foot down and like, we can kind of go. So doing yeah. things like that and just like re have, it's like rehabbing those conversations with people and say, Hey, I'm going to do this. Like, I would just love to chat with you about if this would be a good fit for you you know, mm -hmm. here's what this is. And like, if it's not for you, like there's no pressure whatsoever, but I'd love to explain like what my vision is with this. Um, but my heart tells me that like, this would be amazing for you. Mm, I love that. Can I ask one more question? Yeah. What did you do? Cause like where I'm at is I need to start enrolling. Like mm -hmm. I am in I, my, I think I could be wrong, but like my warm market has flushed over, right? Mm -hmm. So initially I had a ton of success because my warm market literally got me to executive. And then it was like meeting new people. And mm -hmm. then I think I have a new warm market, but my next thing I need to have a breakthrough on is like getting back to enrolling like one to two people a week. Mm -hmm. And what, what did you do that was like when you were in that situation that, that really helped you have a breakthrough? I mean, honestly, I think for like enrollments for me, like not even lying, I, for, I literally had, and I could go back and look, probably look at it somewhere, but I think I had <laughs> two enrollments all of 2019. Like I literally had two enrollments the whole year. Like it was, you know, like I said, when I had a drop in my business, like it wasn't just other people. Like <laughs> I had like myself really dip down and how I was showing up. Um, I feel like, especially with COVID and stuff, like, you know, we're not, weren't seeing people. Like, I think for me, like just really sh showing up on social media and posting a lot. And honestly, at this point, like, I don't really care what I post. Like, I just don't even give a crap anymore. Like, it's like, <laughs> if it just helped, like in my head, it's like, if it helps one person, like, you know, if I know you, then they don't follow me, you know, and I'm just going to post isogenics. I'm going to post whatever I want, you know? And I mean, still we've been pretty secluded from from covid we still haven't seen a lot of people and i just i just post a lot you know i mean yeah. and are you that's not everybody's people? thing but <laughs> are you are, are you adding people to your social media like are you finding new friends are you or is it like just your existing social media just my existing social media yeah. you know and and that's the one thing too and i you know coming a little bit you know i'm hopeful for a more normal summer and stuff. And like, you know, I still am a part of like a mom's group. You know, I was on a couple of Zooms this year, like not much at all, you know, and that's something I do need to work on is like, I need to like expand my network and, and meet more people for sure. That's like a weakness of mine for, you know, just being honest. So, I mean, literally all the enrollments I've had is just by, by posting, you know. And you've had a lot. Yeah. It's, it's really grown, like I said, from, you know, going in, I think I had over 30 in 2020. And, you know, like I said, I literally had like two in 2019. So, Yeah. And your social media is on point. I mean, right now it's like, you can tell you don't give a crap anymore. <laughs> like, it's like, wow, she's going for it. 
in a good way, you know, like in a really good way. So you're just like, shut the stories. Who cares? This is who I am. Live out loud. I can tell. Right. So good. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the whole level one, level two coaching program, is that just open? Like you open that up to everyone. It's not like you <laughs> pick certain people. You just say, if you want to opt in, you can do this. Yeah. 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 And I just said, you know, whoever, you know, and I didn't put any pressure on anybody, you know, and honestly, I didn't have a lot of people reach out and I was just like, you know what, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to be, you know, upset about it. Like I usually would in the past being like, why aren't people doing this? Like I can help you. Right. You know, and it's just like, okay, that says more yeah. about them than it does about me and where they're at. And you know, like you can't force anybody. It's like, I'm giving you free coaching. Like, okay, that's cool. Like, yeah. I'll hit, I'll hit you the energy. It's like an energy of just like release it, like release the expectation. I love it. Right. Yeah. Gretchen, any more questions? Go for it. I promise this is the last one. Sorry if you want to drop <laughs> off because it's not dirty. Um, I can just talk to Christine after. Okay. So what do you do when people, I have a lot of people who say they're ready and in their heart, they really feel ready but then something will happen and they don't quit, but it's like they stop taking action. And then, and so I feel like every time I'm like, okay, let's go, we're going to go. And I'm not dragging them. They're telling mm -hmm. me, right. You know, I, I can think of five people right now who are like, I want this. I want this. Is there something you do to help them? I don't know. I feel like maybe there's something I'm not doing to help them. You know, is there anything that you're doing that's really helping people to who want it actually get success? Um, I think sometimes like it's, you know, and not in all cases, but just being like, Hey, like, I love that you're like, you know, it sounds like on a scale one to 10, like you're at a 10 and you're ready to go. Like, let's set up a zoom, you know, and then on like your end having some specific, you know, and we could go over some of these too, like some specific questions, you know, and just saying like, you know, like, even some expectations, like if you're ready to go, like these are some things that I would love to do with you. And like, how does this sound? And like asking how they want to be coached and like, Hey, like girl, I know that there's days that I don't feel like doing this either. Right. Like, but on those days, like when I don't hear from you or like you're saying you want this and you're not doing that, like what's, what's my best approach to coach you, you know, because like, I want to give you that kick in the butt, but I want to know, you know, and so you're like setting up those guidelines as far as like how you can approach them, you know, and they gave you that permission, you know, so then, you know, we don't have to second guess some of that too, because it's hard sometimes because everybody is different and it's like, okay, like it's almost like a contract, right? Where you're just like, we're going to really talk about this and like, are you serious? You know, because I want this for you. Like these goals are like my goals now, you know, and like getting them clear and doing a vision board or, you know, if you guys have seen, um, Trudy Maple's like dream sessions, like I've had people do that before where it's like, Hey, let's do that again. Like you say that you want to do this. Like, I want to hear what it is that's motivating you watch this video. And like, we're going to talk about exactly the things that you wrote down with, with that session so that I can write it down and know what's, what's on your heart, like what dreams that you have so that we're going to make those happen. Right. And now you're both kind of committed to that, that vision and stuff. Now I'm not saying that all my team is doing that by, by any means, but I try, I try to do that, you know, because it helps you as a coach, right. You know, to be able to know those things. And, you know, then if, then at that point, if like, they're not showing up, it's like, it's kind of like, let me know when you're like, you got to let me know when you're really ready, you know? And, know that I'm always here and I, I will like, whenever you're a hundred percent in, like I'll give you 110% to get you there. But like, then it's kind of the harsh conversation of like, you got to let me know, you know, you tried, right? Yeah. And we, we all, it, it happens to all of us. No. So, so good to hear how you talk with them through it and have them really say like, how do you want to be coached? Cause some mm -hmm. people want such different things. It's good. Right. Good, good. Okay. okay, I have a question. Yeah, Barb. And I'm I'm making it go even longer. So Gretchen, don't worry about it. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, so Christine, I remember on a call previously, actually it wasn't even a call. I think you did a Facebook Live in the Be Brave group. 
And, um, and I'm going to be honest, I don't watch a ton of them, but like you literally shared your heart and like your history, like story on there. And I just appreciate you so much that you're doing this because it is, it's, it's very vulnerable. And sometimes it's not fun to share the ugly side of, of the business, but I want you to know, I appreciate it. Um, one of the things you said on there was um, when you saw what Michelle was earning by staying paid as executive mm -hmm. and you realized like what you were missing out on by not being paid as executive and you like got yourself back there. Like, help me understand like what did that for you? Like, how did you do that? Knowing that like you have wonderful, long, sexy legs very long, sexy legs. <laughs> and knowing that like, in order to stay paid as executive, you need to have, you know, steady con consultants on both sides. So like, what did that look like for you in order to get back to executive? Did you pop new people? Did you bring people back? Like, what did that look like for you? And has your energy or posture shifted around getting people to consultants, like looking for business builders or just popping people consultants, like with the collagen? Right. Um, yeah. I mean, Michelle definitely keeps me in line. She, you know, she got back to executive before I did, you know, you know, and obviously that, that executive lifestyle bonus was a, was a big deal where it was like, whole, like, you know, I think, I don't know if it was Kelly, somebody had talked about that recently on a call where, you know, getting back to executive, like, we know that we should be there, but like some of those little small executive matches were like easy to just let slide. Right where it's like, you weren't really losing a lot at that point, you know, but then when they threw that in, it's like, holy crap, like, that's a lot of money. And I was like, I, like, I need to do something about this, you know? And I honestly think that like, I was out of executive for so long. Like I really had a story in my head. Like I was telling myself, like, you are not good at creating consultants. I can't create consultants. I can't create consultants. And then, you know, like, what, what am I bringing to myself is like, I wasn't creating consultants, you know, and I was probably out of executive for like two years. And I honestly, you know, when you're embarrassed with your business, you just kind of stop tracking some of that stuff because you don't even want to know the details, you know? And so I just kind of kept going until that came about, you know, and then Michelle had had the ex like executive lifestyle bonus, like two to three months before I even hit and she's getting this. And I'm like, what am I, what am I doing? Like, I got to start doing something about it, you know, and I, I, if I were to look at it, I think a lot of those consultants were actually new people, you know, and, you know, when looking at leader in action too, like my, my weakness area is always the third column. It's, it's the rank advancements. Like that's something that I've always had a weakness in. And so like, if I, now, if I can get, if I don't zero out in that column, like, I don't care what the rank advancement is. Like it's, it's a win. Like I just, you know, but, you know, a lot of those people, it's just, I wouldn't say that I've done a, you know, I'm still learning on how to really get that person from consultant to like being a business builder. Like that's a, that's still a real big struggle for me even now. Um, you know, and there again, you just question if you're, it's like, why can't I create more executives? Like what is going on, you know, with with people, you know, and then it's having to remember too, it's like, okay, like not everybody's going to be a millionaire. Like not everybody's going to want to create this like I do. Right. You know, and some of these people are just wanting to share with a couple people. Like that's a lot of people too, you know? So, I mean, a lot of my consultants were just created as like, they shared with a couple of people, like, you know, in their opinion, it's kind of still like whoop you do you know, yeah. they don't really care, you know? And I'm hoping to like work in this next year to like get some people, you know, have more consultants that like, man, the, the, the people you don't have to worry about, like, you know, like with all your heart, like they're not falling off. Like, cause they, the ones that actually care that they stay a consultant, right? Yeah. <laughs> not that, you know, not just you caring, but like they care too. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. That's, so yeah. Good. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So helpful. And it is it's always, it's like, we have all these customers and then the funnel is smaller to the ones who like get to consultant and then smaller for the ones who care about staying a consultant, smaller for the ones who want to actually earn an income. And then smaller to when you find those rocket ships who just get it. And they're like, I want this now, you know? So, right. You know, and it is, you know, and it's, it's, it's very, <laughs> it's very few people, yeah. right. You know, it's yeah. like, it's very few, but you also just said it just takes a few. So 
It's very, right. you know, and you never know when they're going to change, you know, like my last consultant yeah. was somebody that I tried talking, like you have 200 people under you, like, let's keep you active. Right. Like, what do you, what, what's going on? And, you know, it's just, then all of a sudden something changes. Right. And it was like, I, I used Jamie Taylor's message that she had shared within the last couple months of like what she'll send to people if like they're, they've got people under them. Right. So mm -hmm. I used that, I followed up and I had two bites out of like, I don't know how many. So, right. I got ghosted by most of my product users, but the one girl I was able to pop consultant and now she's enrolled somebody else from mom's group. And that girl has enrolled her husband and somebody else from mom's group. And now I'm seeing this trickling effect, you know, but it just took time, you know, and it's like, wow, like be patient, right? Like, cause you just don't know when that right time potentially could come. And it took me messaging her several times of like, Hey, I would love to help you get your products paid for. You've got 200 people under you, you know, and now things are moving a little bit too. Oh. So it's like, keep sharing, keep loving on people. and. So good. Yeah. I love it. Keep sharing, keep loving on people. Any last parting words or just final advice as we go through the rest of this year, the pandemic, it's such a weird year, you know, it's such a, just any final advice? I think just, you know, it's just being really consistent, you know, with what you're doing and being, you know, like we're with a company that we should be so proud and bold with what we have. Like, I just, like the fact that Isogenics landed in my lap is like one of the best godsend things that ever happened, you know? Mm -hmm. So like every aspect of my life and it's like, you know, just be so transparent with it, you know? And, you know, sharing the products and the opportunity and that's something else like i know that sonia has been on several things lately sharing and i was in sonia's mastermind group with like the zooms and stuff and like i still am not great at sharing the compensation plan right away like i'll be honest and that's probably why i've struggled with consultants you know and that's something that i really want to step up my game with because it's like if i really want to like create those solid consultants and like and like, shame on me for not showing that to people right away, to be honest with you. Right. You yeah. know, and just stepping at my game of like being bold right up front and showing that opportunity point, you know, um, you know, and it's just, you know, especially with collagen, like if we don't talk to people about this stuff, like somebody else is going to sign your people up, like your friends, your family, your network, because they're going to realize how amazing it is. And you're, you know, like we probably have all had those people you're like, why didn't they talk? And like, they signed up with somebody else. Right. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. just be bold because people do want what we have. And especially right now with the products and the opportunity part, like who, who wouldn't want to be healthier and wealthier? Like, I don't know. Totally. <laughs> it's true. Mic drop. Right. And you're right. I mean, we should all be shouting from the rooftops what we have here and just proud. And that's what I see in your social media lately, like just pride for what you have. So such mm -hmm. a good reminder. I'll be like Christine. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. I know everyone here just values you so much and all your wisdom and knowledge. And yeah, thanks for, thanks for being you and showing up and sharing your story with such vulnerability and passion. Yeah. Well, thanks. Well, it's so good to see your guys' faces. I I'm looking forward to like large, like, you know, like when you, you know, like we've had, you know, some good business builders come along that have never experienced like an isogenics event. True. And I'm like, you have no idea. Like, I no just idea. can't wait to like be back into the midst of that stuff and see you guys in person. So true. So, yeah. yeah. So can't wait. Okay. Everyone have a great night. Thank you, Christine. All right, thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.